Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb, and this, this is what an airplane's supposed to look like. It's a Carbon Cub FX. So, I was quite prepared to absolutely despise this airplane. This is the NX Cub, also from Cub Crafters. It's based on the popular X-Cub tailwheel airplane, which as far as I'm concerned is the best tail dragger ever made. Now, I am not exactly a tail dragger purist. I'm not a guy who would ever say that only real pilots fly tail draggers. People who say that, I think, are full of crap. On the other hand, when you add a nose wheel to an airplane that started out as a tail dragger, it doesn't always look right. Think about the tri-pacer. In fact, I told my friend Chip Allen at Cub Crafters, this thing is butt ugly. He said, yeah, well, maybe so, but you go fly it. So I did. Well, Cub Crafters saw a market opportunity, and it was actually Jim Richmond who saw it uh, way back in about 2009, um, where we wanted to make backcountry aviation more accessible. Prior to that point, there was Super Cubs. We had our own Top Cub, Scouts, Huskies out there. And uh, because the light sport rules came out, um, Cub Crafters was able to introduce the Carbon Cub, bring a lot more people into backcountry aviation through the light sport channel. And then um, looking around at, at how can we bring more people in, make it more accessible, um, the answer was a really capable nose wheel airplane uh, for backcountry aviation. So when the X-Cub was first being planned, when it was first being uh, conceptualized, uh, the nose wheel was part of the plan from day one. Uh, the design always included um, gear attachment points for the uh, aft position on the main gear and putting a nose wheel airplane on. So we've had it in our mind since about 2009 when the airplane was first introduced in 2016. Um, it was carrying a lot of the structure in the airframe that was needed for the nose wheel. And then in, uh, in 2019, we introduced it to the world. So if you look back here, you can see there's a fairing right here. When the airplane's in its tail wheel configuration, and the X-Cub can be configured as a tail wheel airplane or a nose wheel airplane and can be converted back and forth, but when it's in its tail wheel configuration, the spring aluminum landing gear bolts on right here. When it's in its nose wheel configuration, it bolts on at this aft station back here. Up here, attached to the engine mount, you've got a truss that you can't see, but that carries the nose wheel. We put the nose wheel as far forward as we can. So we wanted the, the nose wheel to be forward so we could have a trailing link type landing gear. The trailing link landing gear pivots on this point here so the overall diameter of tire that the airplane sees is really a big tire like this, even though this is, a, this is an 800, uh, uh, 6 by 800 tire that we've got up front up here. When this goes up and down, when the, when the, when the trailing link action is, is going up and down, the loads are being carried right up through here into that truss, and then the truss is bolted to the engine mount, which is bolted to the airframe, so unlike a Cessna, for example, the firewall isn't carrying these loads. It's not a weak spot for a nose wheel airplane in the back country. Um, it's free castering. So it will, there's no nose wheel steering. There's no steering mechanism to brake on it. Uh, so slow speeds, it does require differential braking. Um, if I take this pin out here and drop out this keyway right here, now, this will pivot 100, 360 degrees. So ground handling is really easy. If I want to push the airplane back and back it up to put it into a hangar, that'll spin all the way around. So ground handling is easy, but then I bring the airplane back forward, twist the nose wheel around, put that lock back in place, and now it's limited to 95 degrees of travel in either direction. So you can still pivot the airplane on one tire and maneuver it very well on the ground um, while you're taxiing, but the nose wheel can't come around and get into the propeller arc on the airplane. 
You can see we've just got a simple skid back here when the airplane's in its nose wheel configuration. If this airplane was being set up as a tail wheel or converted to a tail wheel, the skid would bolt off. A normal tail wheel assembly would bolt right here. And then the uh, tail wheel itself would uh, hook up right here to the rudder for the normal tail wheel steering. It takes two guys about four hours to convert the airplane from nose wheel to tail wheel or from tail wheel to nose wheel. So when a buyer buys the airplane, they're gonna specify where they want us to initially deliver it as a nose wheel airplane, as a tail wheel airplane, as an amphib float airplane, uh, lots of different configurations available. When the airplane leaves the factory in the nose wheel configuration like this one, we badge it as the NX Cub. When it leaves the factory in the tail wheel configuration, we badge it as the X Cub. Same airplane, different bolt-on landing gear configuration. If a buyer out in the future wants to convert the airplane, they can buy the parts from us to convert the airplane from nose wheel to tail wheel or from tail wheel to nose wheel. The NX Cub is powered by a what we're calling a CC393i. It's assembled by Lycoming for us. It's a IO390 that we've done some things like we've done in the past with the uh, 340 and with the 360 to lighten the engine up. So you've got a fuel injected, 215 horsepower engine. It's a lightweight engine. Uh, the installed weight is only 10 pounds more than an O360. It's got dual electronic ignition, the Surefly uh, electronic ignition. It's a certified engine um, and we've had great success with it. We're really enjoying having the higher horsepower available to us. The uh, nose wheel configured airplane has to have this larger higher horsepower fuel injected engine. The 180 horsepower carbureted engine that's also available as a in the tail wheel version of the X-Cub, um, the downdraft, the, the carburetor below the engine uh, interferes with the nose wheel truss that carries the load. So it's gotta be the fuel injected larger engine for the NX-Cub. So maximum gross weight on a uh, X-Cub is 2,300 pounds. Um, same as Cub Crafters Top Cub. And uh, the goal on the X-Cub was to have around a thousand pounds of useful load. This airplane here with the leather seats, the full, uh, the full option, you know, instrument panel, it'll have around 900 pounds of useful load. So 900 pounds of useful load is respectable, but what can you really do with it? Well, it depends. The NX Cub is intended for outback flying, and that's frequently hauling a lot of stuff, tents, coolers, hunting, and fishing gear into remote, unimproved airstrips. Here's a for instance. Idaho is a popular outback destination, and Lemhi County Airport, that's northeast of Boise, is about 30 or 40 miles from a cluster of outback runways. 25 gallons of fuel would be plenty, so that leaves 750 pounds for people and stuff. Two gravitationally consequential guys in the cabin would still leave 250 pounds for camping gear. The NX will carry the weight, but because of cargo area weight limitations, it'll bust the ass CG. Lighten the gear a little, and it'll just make it. If you're a lonesome cowboy kind of pilot and you don't need the rear seat, bring the espresso machine and a generator to run it. You'll have the room. But don't plan on getting there in a hurry. With those big Tundra tires and the three wheels hanging in the breeze, the NX Cub will cruise about 120 miles per hour on nine gallons an hour. Cub Craster promotional copy gives a cruise speed of 150 miles per hour, but given the fuel burn and capacity, that's not really a practical number. Topped off with 46 usable gallons of fuel, yeah. you could stretch the still air range to maybe 550 miles with a reserve but that will cut into the payload and it's really driving a square peg into a round hole. If you want to fly from Chicago to Miami, buy a Cirrus. And speaking of Cirrus, despite being a ragwing, the NX Cub is electronically sophisticated with moving map GPS, autopilot, ADS-V, and electronic ignition, which actually the Cirrus doesn't have. Here's how the Surefly electronic ignition system works. Certified dual electronic ignition system, so no magneto at all. Um, you can argue the merits of that uh, back and forth all day long, but if you look at the statistics of the reliability of electronic ignition systems versus magnetos, uh, the electronic ignition systems are more reliable. Uh, this airplane here has dual redundancy in 
the fact that there's three power sources to run the electronic ignition. There is the alternator, which is turning all the time. There's the main battery on the airplane, which if you lost an alternator belt, for example, uh, the main battery would continue to run the electronic ignition and the avionics for about an hour. But if you were in a scenario where you lost the alternator, you depleted the main battery, uh, there's a right ignition backup battery, which will run just the right side of the electronic ignition uh, for half an hour to 45 minutes to give you enough time to safely go find a spot to land the airplane, diagnose what the problem is. Everything about the NX Cub is optimized for short takeoff and landing work into and out of rough airfields. Super Cubs were always good at this, and the NX just refines it further, but with a twist. That nose wheel means that you can pull off impressive short field performance with less chance of balling the thing up in a ditch because, like in Pipers and Cessnas, a nose wheel soaks up and buries your worst piloting mistakes. To a point. Chip Allen told me that the NX has so much power why you can just firewall it and haul the stick back into your lap. He was right, just don't try it with a GoPro on the tail skid. One limitation of the nose wheel version is that it's not the airplane you want to roll over logs and boulders with 35 inch Tundra tires. You'd want the tail wheel version for that. Besides the nose wheel, the NX has two other things that keep the would-be backcountry pilot out of trouble. It has a ton of surplus power, so even on those days you don't believe your flight app when it says the density altitude really is 9,000 feet, the airplane has a good chance of dragging you over the trees anyway. The wing is festooned with vortex generators that keep the airflow stuck to the wing, so the NX has a low stall speed, about 33 miles per hour indicated. That means you got to work at it to get a stall break. Fair amount of pitch change uh, with flap. Kind of got to anticipate it a little bit. Yeah, the pitch change is, is more exaggerated the faster you're going. So um, a lot of us, when we're flying these airplanes, we'll slow down to 50, 60 miles an hour before we start putting a lot of flaps in it. That minimizes the pitch change. Okay, we're coming up on uh, 47 indicated. And about a couple miles an hour slower, you should hear the stall warning horn chirp at you. Uh, 35, 34, 33. Is that right? 33? Yep, for the break? Yep, that's a sign. Let's try it again. Maximum effort landings require minimum energy touchdowns, which means approach speeds in the low 40s or even high 30s. The NX Cub will do this, but it takes practice to get there. With even a breath of wind, 30 or 40 foot rollouts are achievable. Brad Dam sent me this video of his short field attempt on a hard surface runway. I think with a day of practice, a pilot of average skills could be a player in a stall competition with a lot less effort than it would take in a tailwheel X-Cub or any other tail dragger. Just to test its versatility, we picked a random farm field in Florida for an off-field landing. After dragging the field for wires, plopping the airplane down in 200 feet was the easy part. Those big tires roll right over the ruts and holes. Left side. Uh, left side. Which one do you have in mind? Oh, there's kind of big oh, one yeah. over here. I mean, okay. it's got lots of room. And... It looks like there's, I saw some tracks in it from some vehicles, so it looks like there's been some vehicles in it recently, so it's not going to be too soft. One, two, seven, pass, number one, seven, two, two, three, turn me, so Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Well, I was high than being high, it was okay. I picked a spot with lots of room. 
And straight ahead take off? Okay. Sure. Still got lots of room to take off? You have to kind of adjust your head to this thing. <laughs> That much power, even with two people aboard the airplane, is a strong mm -hmm. climber. I was flying a tight pattern and found myself overshooting pattern altitude before the turn to downwind. You have to remember to haul way back on the throttle Caution. during pattern work, even with two people aboard. Although the basis for the NX Cub remains the original Super Cub, the Cub Crafters versions are far more upscale, with top of the line glass panel avionics packages luxurious seats, and modern seat belts. The cabin has nice touches like these little storage bins and a tablet mount for the rear passenger. As of mid-July 2021, the NX Cub is still awaiting final FA certification and is currently sold as an experimental aircraft. The certified price will be about $420,000 fully equipped, plus the gear swap and or float hardware if you want that. So what are we to make of the NX Cub? Well, you know, the first time I saw this airplane, it was in a press release photograph, and I thought, what the hell? Seriously? But what I didn't realize at the time is that the nose gear design on this airplane isn't like the typical oleo strut confection you find in a Cessna or a Piper, but it's more related to the Helfer Strong steel struts that Grumman put into World War II Navy carrier fighters. So what that means is, uh, well, let's draw a little envelope here. And this is the uh, standard light envelope for the airplane. We can extend a little corner of that. And that little corner is exceptional stall performance without having to have rarefied skills and a low probability of bending or breaking the airplane. Now, if I were buying this airplane personally, I would get both options, the nose gear and the tail wheel, and I'd throw in a pair of whipline amphibious floats because it's a great float airplane and make the airplane really versatile. And I'd hire me a guy to change over all that stuff because, I don't know, I don't want to break a nail. What's on the nose gear, what it allows you to do is plop it on the runway, haul back on the stick and stand on the brakes and stop the thing in like 20 or 30 tire screeching, tire burning feet. And if I actually own the airplane, I'd fly it exactly that way, because remember, I got a guy to change out those flat spotted $1,200 Tundra tires. So Chip Allen, when the airplane is on the nose gear, it's still but ugly, but in a sexy, perverse kind of way. Rab Webb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting, and if you made it this far, God bless you. Thanks for watching. And don't fly like me. You can find a full report on the NX Cub in the July 2021 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. <laughs>